So finally for this semester, um, I want to show you something that would actually come now and um, which uh, I have to leave out due to time restrictions. More or less, that's the two weeks uh, that we are missing this semester. But uh, at least I want to show you uh, that also nonlinear problems like the one that we encountered, like inverse scattering, can be solved with the ideas that we derived for linear problems. And specifically, I want to derive or use a Kutchmarz algorithm for solving a slightly changed inverse scattering problem. So we already saw the problem with inverse scattering or one uh, problem with inverse scattering. And uh, generally it's a nonlinear problem. And uh, what we did to uh, derive an analytic solution was uh, we went to the Born approximation and uh, solved everything in the Born approximation. However, in most applications, that's not really valid. And what we have to do is solve a nonlinear problem. Now, nonlinear problems typically cannot be solved analytically, so it's quite clear that we'll have to come up with a numerical algorithm. And um, several ideas already immediately come to mind. So let me sum this up in the following way. First, uh, in our inverse scattering problem, for each incoming wave, we had a measurement op operator RK and measured data GK. So uh, that already looks a little bit like the, like the radon situation. We had um, several operators uh, for each position of the X-ray source, and now we have different measurement operators for each incoming wave, and for each one, um, the data is measured. Okay, what we want to find, of course, is a, so, uh, is a common solution for all measurement operators. So we would like to find a Q such that, that RK of Q is GK for K from one to P minus one. Okay, so uh, that looks like a CT and we were uh, for numerical solutions, we were very successful with Kutchmarz. So we might think of using that again here. So uh, what was the idea behind Kutchmarz? Well, first of all, that was a numerical algorithm, an iterative algorithm. So uh, we computed uh, approximations QL and defined QL plus one as the solution, as the least squares solution to, uh, the, um, to the case equation uh, in our equation system. So we had something like QL plus one is QL plus omega RK star. And th there was actually something in here. I left this out, uh, GK minus RK QL. And actually there was just a C over here, but we often just replaced that with the identity matrix. So that's okay. So this was our old idea. And uh, maybe we can reuse that in this case. The problem is that um, in, uh, for radon, RK was a linear operator. Um, and um, now in, um, uh, in inverse scattering, RK, the measurement operator, is nonlinear. Okay, so RK is nonlinear, uh, and uh, I have no idea what RK adjoint should in that case should be. However, there's, uh, of course, an idea you should have from numerical analysis, I think. So uh, that's the Newton method, Newton's method. And that's something like if you're trying to solve f of x equals zero, when uh, f is a nonlinear function, then you do something like, okay, you uh, come up again with an iterative scheme. So you have xls. And you define XL plus one by the following idea. You set XL plus one as XL plus DX. And uh, then you linearize at the point XL. So uh, using the, um, using the, uh, the first derivative. So you approximate this one by F of XL plus F prime of XL times DX. And that can now be solved. This is a linear equation in DX and that can be solved. And you set XL plus one equal to XL plus DX. 
Okay, so uh, why don't we do exactly the same? Yeah, you could. So um, RK of Q, we uh, um, in, in the Kutchmarts algorithm, let's assume we are already at QL and we are trying to fit the equation, the case equation. So RK times Q of L plus one should be GK. And as in the Newton idea, we set GK, that should be RK of QL plus one. We set QL plus one as QL plus DQ and um, approximate this one using the first derivative, whatever that may be, and uh, write it as RQ times QL plus RQ prime of QL times DQ. And now dq is the solution to a linear equation. However, as is usual in the Kutchmarts case, this is underdetermined. So we will look for the minimum norm solution. And that will look something like dq is rk prime of ql adjoint times rk prime of ql, rk prime of ql adjoint to the minus one times gk min minus rk ql. And um, yeah, as in the as in the art algorithm, we replace we might replace that by omega times i, and uh, then uh, we get a simple formula for dq. So more or less, that amounts to applying the adjoint of the derivative or of whatever linear linearization there is to the defect, and uh, then uh, add that to the current iterate. Okay, um, so what we need is a linearization. linearization. Um, best it would be the derivative of RK. Now RK is an operator, uh, so you could take the Frechet derivative and that's what's usually done. But uh, I'll, just, um, I'll just derive uh, one linearization and it can actually be proved that this is the derivative of RK, but since I don't want to prove this, Let's just assume that it is some linearization of RK, of the true RK. Okay, and we need the adjoint, of course, because we need to apply this to the defect uh, to get uh, our update. Okay, um, this is a very common problem uh, in inverse problems, and these adjoint methods are very, very popular. So, uh, what you'll have to do in these nonlinear problems is you always have to derive, you have to derive a, a linearization, you have to come up with a linearization and then compute the adjoint of that. And um, yeah, that's uh, something you'll have to do very often. For bilinear problems, and by bilinear problems, I mean problems where the variables appear as a product. And that's the case, of course, for the Helmholtz equation, because you have that unknown Q and the unknown function U there. So that's the product bilinear, which is bilinear in Q and U. Um, in these bilinear problems, the uh, derivative can be very simply derived. And I want to demonstrate that uh, with the inverse scattering problem, but I want to slightly change the boundary condition because I had this uh, unpleasant radiation condition at infinity, which I didn't go into detail about. So I want to look at the, um, at the um, inverse scattering problem in a slightly different setting, which can actually be derived from the other one. Let's assume that uh, our object is situated between two lines, L1 and L2, which are infinitely long. And let's assume we have, an, uh, we have a, um, um, a wave U which uh, obeys the Helmholtz equation, the per perturbed Helmholtz equation. So delta U plus K squared square times one plus Q equals um, one plus q u equals zero, where q, of course, again, is the contrast function of the sound speed inside the object. That's what we're going for, and that's what we're trying to find. And the measurements we have is, well, um, you we assume that u satisfies boundary condition down here at L1. So u should be equal to F0 down here. du over d mu should, uh, should uh, du, you yeah, not should be, u is F0, du over d mu is F1 down here. And uh, then we measure 
the value of u up here. So we measure u on this line over here. Okay, so um, if we have the following setting. There's a solution to the Helmholtz equation that satisfies a boundary condition, an uh, initial value condition down here, and it is measured up here on L2. Okay, uh, note that uh, this, if you're familiar with partial differential equations, then uh, this will be very um, strange to you because actually it's an initial value problem. Um, it can be shown that with the boundary conditions down here, with the initial values, there is a unique solution. So that's nice. But it, uh, the solution depends on uh, these uh, boundary condition, on the initial value conditions in an unstable way. But um, since we're just going for the function q, not for the function u, it turns out that there's an approximate solution which will do for the inverse problem. So uh, we can just forget about that and really look at the initial value problem. Okay, so uh, what is our measurement operator? Our measurement operator, of course, is for a fixed q, we measure the, um, if, uh, we measure u on L2, where u is the solution to this problem up here. To the, to the Helmholtz equation with that q and these uh, initial value conditions. Okay, uh, and of course we have the measurement. So our goal is to find a q such that r of q is g, and you see that I dropped the k at uh, this point. Of course, this, this has to be satisfied for all k, but um, yeah, we are looking at one equation at a time, so uh, I dropped the k here. Okay, so we're trying to find a q such that r of q is g for one single data set. And uh, following our idea, I write R of uh, Q as uh, as a sequence, as a, um, I, I approximate Q by a series of Qs, by a series of Qs, QL. Uh, I write uh, QL plus one as QL plus DQ, and I would like to have this equals G. So um, I approximate this operator R by a linearization. So this is something like R of QL plus R prime of QL times DQ. Okay, so uh, now what I need is the derivative of uh, R with respect to Q at the point QL. And um, so I need to come up with some linearization. At least I need to come up with some linearization. Okay, so what I would like to do is I would like to comp uh, compute that R prime of Q for Q fixed, and that we will do now. 